We are back and a House hearing into the IRS scandal you see happening on the left hand side of your screen. That's underway right now on Capitol Hill. You see Daryl Issa as he continues the procedure there. We had a top IRS official at the center of this controversy repeatedly refuse to answer any questions by taking the fifth. Watch this. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws. I have not violated any IRS rules or regulations, and I have not provided false information to this or any other congressional committee. And while I would very much like to answer the committee's questions today, I've been advised by my counsel to assert my constitutional right not to testify or answer questions related to the subject matter of this hearing. After very careful consideration, I've decided to follow my counsel's advice and not testify or answer any of the questions today. And there's the moment where she walked out uh, with her counsel. We are joined this morning by Kentucky Republican Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader, of course. Uh, welcome, uh, Senator. Good to have you here this morning. And I do want to get morning, your Martha. thoughts uh, on that moment in just a minute. But I, I want to ask you first about uh, the immigration bill, uh, which I know uh, is very much on your mind this morning as well. It passed out of the committee last night. Is the bill in its current form coming out of this committee something that you would agree to? Are you happy with the structure of this bill right now? Well, let me say this, Martha. I'm, I'm undecided about the bill, but I'm not undecided about the problem. Uh, the border is not secure, and we need to fix it. So I'm not decided yet whether this is the bill to do that, but we've got a serious problem along the border. We need to fix it. The status quo is not acceptable. Undecided about the bill, but not undecided about the problem would be the best way to sum up how I feel about it. All right. Well, the, the president has said that it's very important that we get immigration over the finish line. Uh, a lot of people politically uh, believe that Republicans might benefit from getting this immigration bill, uh, you know, put to the full Senate floor. I, is it a bill in the current in the current form that you would bring to the Senate floor and then have it well, go further? Yeah, well, it's, it, it is the only bill that has that will be brought up on the Senate floor. And obviously you can't improve the status quo. You can't fix the border unless you take some action. As to whether or not this bill achieves that result, I think we will not know until the end of the debate. But will you bring it to the Senate floor as it exists? That, that's the bill that will come to the Senate floor. The question is, will it leave the Senate floor? Uh, will it fix the problem? I think we don't know that right. at the beginning of the debate. The debate has to occur. It will occur over multiple weeks uh, in, in June in all likelihood. All right, we'll see where that goes. Uh, and I, I do want to ask you about this IRS issue. Uh, a, you know, where we watched Lois Lerner moments ago. She took the fifth. Uh, one of the big issues that has been percolating is, is when the president knew about this IG report and when he knew about the problem that prompted the IG report. We now know that the White House counsel, uh, as well as Dennis McDonough, the chief of staff, were aware of it, but they felt it was inappropriate to let the president in on what was going on. What do you think about that? Well, I think what we know for sure has been is that there's a culture of intimidation a across this administration. The president demonizing his enemies, uh, attempting to shut people up. Uh, there's certainly a culture of intimidation as to who knew what with regard to the IRS scandal. I think we need to have a complete and thorough investigation. Uh, that's going to occur. Uh, today is just uh, one of the early chapters in what is likely to be a quite lengthy book with a lot of chapters before we finally know uh, what happened and who knew what and when. You know, one of the big questions, though, is what the appropriate way to continue this investigation is. I mean, do you believe that this requires an independent special prosecutor to get to the bottom of this? Well, that's typically initiated by an administration. What I can tell you for sure is we're going to have a real investigation, a serious investigation here in Congress. And interestingly enough, over here in the Senate, controlled by Democrats, it appears as if they too want to have a thorough investigation. And of course, it can be done on a bipartisan basis over here. And I'm encouraged that, uh, that the, the Congress will do its job in both the House and the Senate uh, to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah I mean, we do sense uh, that both sides seem to be very concerned about this. Uh, it is a trust issue, as Elijah Cummings just brought up in this Congress. Do you see an avenue here for real IRS reform? I mean, does this, does this provide an opportunity to say, you know, for health care, for example, is this an organization that is fit to 
to fill the role that it has, which is significant in carrying out the president's health care legislation? Yeah, I mean, the American people are now just learning the IRS has an important play to role, uh, a role to play in uh, the enforcement of Obamacare. Do we really think that's a good idea? I think not. Uh, actually, I think Obamacare was the worst piece of legislation that's been passed in modern times and ought to be pulled out uh, root and branch. Uh, but just another good argument against Obamacare is the big role the IRS has to play in the enforcement of it. Do you see an avenue, given this situation with the IRS, to pursue that in a more aggressive way in terms of the repeal of Obamacare or overhauling this whole thing if the IRS, yeah, think, as you say, is not fit? I think repealing Obamacare would be the single biggest step we could take toward getting the country back on track economically. It's killing jobs. Uh, health insurance premiums are rising. Everything Republicans predicted back in 2009 when it passed would happen is happening. And so uh, it's the single biggest impediment to getting our economy back in the kind of condition we would all like to see it in is Obamacare. And of course, it's all now being implemented. The, the medical device tax has gone into effect next year. The health insurance uh, premium tax uh, uh, premiums are going up. Jobs are being lost. It's wreaking havoc with our economy. And frankly, uh, just as soon as the Democrats figure out what a huge mistake they made, we ought to be repealing it root and branch. I guess the question is, what would be the next step? You're, you're, you know, you're saying that you do think it's problematic, that you do think that it should be repealed, but, but does this change anything in terms of what the next step would be in, in going down that road? Well, I hope so. I mean, to give you an example, we had a vote in the Senate uh, a month or so ago on repealing the medical device tax, and 79 senators, obviously a lot of Democrats, voted to repeal the medical device tax because it's exporting jobs and wreaking havoc with one of our most successful industries. Uh, we'll see uh, whether now there's an effort, I would expect there would be, uh, to eliminate the IRS from the enforcement mechanism of it. Frankly, I don't think this bill is fixable. The best thing to do would be to repeal it root and branch, just get rid of it. That's hard to do when you have a Democrat in the White House who thinks it's his biggest accomplishment. But it's not gonna work. Uh, it's imploding slowly and wreaking havoc with our economy. And I think a lot of Democrats are beginning to figure that out. The chairman of the Finance Committee, a Democrat, said it was a train wreck. And he's, of course, absolutely right. Well, we'll see uh, where this IRS issue leads with regard to that. Senator McConnell, always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You, Martha.